so much for joining me. My name is Tracy, if you haven't been here before, and this is a DIY upcycling channel where we take discarded unwanted items, breathe new life into them, and create one-of-a-kind unique pieces, and sometimes whimsical. So today I want to work on a flannel shirt. It's pre-owned, used off the of eBay, and I there is some sewing involved, but it's easy sewing. This is more of a artsy creative project for me. I would be bored doing tedious sewing all day. So I don't have any rules, any patterns for this. Just going to wing it and see what we come up with. First thing I'm going to do, I want mine to be more of a boxy jacket shape. So I am just going to cut a straight line. I have these nice plaid patterns to follow and just cut a straight line all the way across and I'm cutting both layers at once. Okay, so I have the bottom cut. This is a men's 2XL tall. So the sleeves are really long and sometimes I love that. I just make big chunky cuffs. Today I want to cut six inches off the bottom of each and that'll bring it to just over the top of my hand a little bit. Now I'm going to my scrap, oh, that's not scrap, my scrap flannel, and I'm creating little ruffles for the sleeve, the bottom, and some flannel patches. I thrifted this old flannel sheet. It has Dalmatians on it, and that's what I'm going to use to make my ruffles. Now to cut the flannel for the ruffle, what I did was measure around the bottom of the flannel and I got 60 inches. Now to have a nice ruffle, you at least want to double that number, which brings me to 120 inches. And I added an extra 10, just in case. And so I have a strip, not those, that is 130 inches long and two inches wide. Now I had to piece a couple together but I had a big sheet. You may have to piece quite a few together. Now for the sleeve, it's 15 inches around. I doubled that, got 30 inches, and I cut two strips that went a little bigger, 35 inches each, one for each sleeve. Okay, so I want my ruffles to be folded over like this when I sew them onto my flannel. So what I'm doing is folding my ruffle wrong sides together and from the beginning to end, I'm going to run a large stitch all along the top. It could even be a basting stitch. This is just to hold this together and make it manageable for when we sew it onto our flannel shirt. Okay. So I did the ruffles on the sleeve to show you the effect we're going after. And what I'm going to do is take my long one, now I'm on the bottom, and I am going to just go to my machine, line up the ends here. I'm overlapping on the outside quarter of an inch. I'll stick my needle in here, and then I will pinch pleat it about every inch and a half inch sew over it. Continue doing that all along the bottom. Now on the sleeve, I had to overlap. So started here, and when I get to the end, just overlapped half an inch, inch, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, the ruffles are done. Now I want to cut my collar off and there's a seam right here. I am going to cut on this side of the seam. I am also going to cut my pockets off. I am just simply going to stay inside of the stitching and there will be fraying and I like that. Now mine had a surprise little pocket inside the pocket. I think I'll leave that unless it gets in my way later. And I am going to seam rip, remove this button. Now I'm going back to my scrap flannel 
to cut out some patches to sew onto the shirt. Okay, so I cut out patches and I just stuck a couple pins in. When I have them where I want them, I'll take this off my mannequin, lay it on my table and pin these more securely. And I did not focus on colors because this is going to be bleached and dyed and I have no idea what anything's going to turn out to be. It'll be a big surprise. So I have a long narrow one right here. I have one on the sleeve, a square here, one at the bottom of the sleeve. I have one here, a little one here overlapping kind of a square, a little rectangle sort of down at the bottom of the sleeve. One here, here, and a long rectangle down at the bottom. Now I'll take it off my mannequin and get these pinned securely. Now that I have everything pinned securely, I'm just going to take it to my sewing machine using a straight stitch and staying close to the edge of each patch, going all the way around, sewing it on. And I am using gold colored thread. And I get this question a lot. What thread do I use? Well, I get it from Walmart. It's called Coates and Clark. And my gold thread is typically color 0083. Okay, patches are all sewn, super easy sewing. Now I want to take it upstairs and bleach it. And in case someone asks, the flannel I'm wearing looks like this in the back. It's a little critter or monster doll. And I do have a video for that and I'll put the link in my description. To bleach it, what I'm going to do is just fill up my bucket with enough hot water so that I can easily submerge my flannel in. And I am just going to pour some pure bleach into it and I don't measure but it's quite a bit because I want it to bleach fast and I want to get it out of there as soon as possible. Okay I'm going to wear a mask and I have some rubber gloves. Now I'm just going to stick my flannel all the way in. I don't like to touch the bleach water so I usually use something like this to push it down. Okay, it's been about eight minutes. It's fading slowly. I added a little more bleach. Now people will say the bleach will deteriorate your fabric and yes, it probably will, but I've been doing pure bleach. Now this is a little bit diluted for over 10 years. I've never had a problem. The only problem I had was one time with a pair of jeans. I let the bleach sit on there for a couple hours, maybe even more, and that did deteriorate. And so. The key for me is to leave it in not very long. <laughs> okay, it's been almost 20 minutes. I don't want this to sit in the bleach any longer than that. So it has faded. Some flannels, if you bleach flannel, you know why some don't bleach very well and why some get almost white. I have no idea. A lot of them... Um, even the same fabric content, if they're all cotton, they'll bleach differently. Now, I am just going to rinse, rinse, rinse this super good. And then I'm going to put it in my washer and wash it on a hot, soapy setting. But I am not going to dry it because the next step will be dyeing it yellow on the stovetop. And this needs to be wet for that process. Okay, I'm prepping my dye for when my shirt is done in the washer. I have a pretty big pot and I filled it up not quite halfway. And then I put in one cup of table salt and a whole bottle of Rit Dye More Daffodil Yellow. Now you can certainly use Dye More on natural fabrics. I think it's actually a more beautiful saturated color on the stove top. Use a metal spoon because dye more will dye more than just fabric and give it a good stir. And I'm just going to test the color with a paper towel. And that's what it's looking like. So now I'll just keep this hot close to a simmer until my shirt is out of the washer.
Okay, so this is what it looks like out of the washer. It's already cute. And we're just prepping it for the cuter stuff. Okay, now I'm going to dye it. Okay, I just stuck my shirt in the pot. It's just below simmering. And I'm going to leave it in there for at least half an hour. I'm going to stir it frequently. If I feel that the color isn't saturated enough, I can leave it in there as long as I want, but at least half an hour. So it's been right at half an hour and it's looking pretty orange, but it has a lot of fun yellow areas. Now I am just going to rinse this until the water coming out of my shirt runs clear. I'm going to put it in a hot dryer. I feel like the heat of the dryer helps set this dye. Okay, I'm about ready to call it quits for the day. My shirt is in the dryer, but when it is done, I'm going to sit down and relax and go through my buttons. And there are eight buttons, I believe, on the front. I'm going to pop them off with my seam ripper and replace them with assorted colorful buttons. And here are the buttons that I added. I started on elbow patches as well. So I cut out a couple pieces of fabric. I put the jacket on, stuck a pin where my elbow is, and then I had to treat this uh, patch a little bit different. This patch is flimsy, so I went to back it with medium weight fusible interfacing. This has glue dots on one side. Here is a tea towel I laid down. I am going to lay my patch down, right side down, lay the bumpy side over top of it, and then I am going to press it with steam on a hot iron for 12 seconds in each spot. I'm not going to go like this. I will pick it up and move it. Now I'm just trimming off the extra interfacing. I don't need to do it to this patch because it's already nice and sturdy. Now I'm just going to center this patch right over the pin where we marked our elbow. And I am just going to put a teeny thin layer of glue just to hold it in place while I'm handling it while I'm doing all the hand stitching. Now I'm sewing these on with embroidery thread. One, because I think it's cute. Two, because the middle of the arm can be really tricky to get into the sewing machine. So I'll just show you a little bit how I do it. I started this one and when I got to the end of my thread, I left a piece so that I can tie my next piece of embroidery thread. Now I don't know what size this needle is, it's just big enough for embroidery thread to go through and I didn't double it. I have kind of a tail hanging here, but I did knot it at the end, but I knotted it here and I have this much tail so that we can tie things off easily. Now I tie things off on the outside because I think it's cute, but you certainly can do it on the inside. Now I left off here. Now I am going to go in through the top where I want it and pull this all the way through until it gets to the knot. And now I have two pieces to easily tie off. Now I'm just going to do a simple whip stitch till I get to this one and tie it off. And I did pretty big stitches. I want them to be seen. So I will just come in from underneath. And go outside that patch onto the flannel. And just continue doing that until I get done.
Here's what we have so far. And now I want to add some more patches from my fabric scraps and mostly floral. Okay, I have my patches laid out. Now I did a long strip of floral. It goes from here to about here. And then I just started layering on top of it, cutting out of all my different floral scraps, a little square up there. This was from just an old shirt. And some more florals. Now on this side, I just did one big sort of vintagey looking calico piece of cotton. And now what I'm going to do is just take an old cutting mat that I have I'm going to slide it in between these layers and I'm just going to pin those on really good so that they don't shift around when I take it to my sewing machine. Now on the back, I'm just adding sort of a collage on the bottom. Already had the flannel, a rectangle floral, some florals, and those little sort of crocheted pieces from a top. Now I'm just going to get those all pinned on. Okay, so here are my patches pinned on. And I did one more thing to the back. So I found this robe at the thrift store. And it's pretty cute. It was a men's robe. But I bought it because it had those postcards on it. And I cut one out and put it right there. Now I just want to get everything sewn on. I am going to take it to my machine, use a gold colored thread, stay close to the edges, go around every patch until they're all sewn on. Okay, now my floral patches are all sewn on. And what I want to do is make and sew on three collage fabric butterflies. I've already made two, and they're just made with scraps of fabric and some yarn, and I want to make the third one with you. Now these two will go on the back, and I'm going to make one for the front, and I'm going to make it similar to this one. Okay, you're going to have to draw a butterfly and cut it out. Now, maybe you have a copier, you can find one online, print it out and cut it if you don't want to draw it. But this is what I have. Mine is eight and a half inches across and seven inches tall. Now I just have this sort of tapestry looking greenish fabric and it was from a thrifted table runner and I'm just going to trace this. And now that it's traced, I'm just going to cut it out. Okay, that part's done. Now I'm going to take my pattern and go to a floral fabric and trace this out again. Now, I'm focus on, focusing on having the floral on the upper wings right now. Now I want to cut this butterfly out. Now see on the finished one how the floral fabric is inside about quarter of an inch in some areas and a good half an inch in others. So when I cut this out, I'm not going to stay on the lines. I'm just going to cut inside the line between a quarter inch, half an inch. Don't have to be super particular. These are just kind of almost ratty, fun looking little collages. Now once I have this cut out, I'm just going to lay it on top here. Now I want a little more floral in this corner, so I just went to my fabric, cut out a piece. I'm just going to lay it there. Okay, see how this one has that polka dot? I'm cutting out a teardrop shape. I'm going to put mine on this side because this one has a lot of flowers. I don't want to cover those up as much. Now I have this fabric and I just cut out some super crude circles and I'm going to lay them right there. Now these little textural pieces 
from a shirt and I am going to just cut out some crude ovals. Now I get to sew all these on and I am sewing it on with black thread and I am just being squiggly and silly, all kinds of black squiggle lines to get everything sewn on. This is just sort of artsy and fun. Definitely don't overthink this. <laughs> So this butterfly has a braid going down the center and I'm going to make that braid out of yarn and I'm going to cut four pieces about 13 inches long. That'll be an odd number to braid but you can do it. And I'm just going to tie a little knot at the end close to the top and then I'm going to take it over to a hook and get that braided and I'm going to leave a tail so I'll braid about five inches of it and then leave the rest make a knot leave the rest as it is now I'm just laying my braid in the center of it I'm putting the top of the braid the even the cut part right there so that I can stitch and what I'll do, if you look closely, I don't know if you can tell or not. I used my second to smallest zigzag stitch in, in black thread, and I went over each area several times. So I went over there, oops, here, 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 and here. And that's what I'm going to do with this one. Now it is complete. I can trim this off later if it's too long, but I'll wait till it's on my jacket. Now here's more of a close-up of the other one. I kind of just smushed some yarn on there and sewed it, and I thought that looked too wide, but I'm keeping it, but that's why I opted for the braid. Okay, now time to sew them onto the jacket. I think I'm going to put one on the front at an angle like this and get it pinned on. Okay, so this is where I place the two on the back, pinned them on, and I move the one on the front up a little bit higher. And now I'm just going to get these sewn on. I'm going to use gold colored thread, my largest zigzag stitch, stay close to the edge on all three butterflies. How cute is this? To launder this, what I would do is button it, turn it inside out, wash it in cold water on a gentle cycle by itself because of the dye. Now, think of all the possibilities of these butterfly applique. They could be on a jean jacket, on jeans, or whatever your heart desires. You could add little buttons, pearls, bits and bobs, sewing trims. Just use your imagination and have fun. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, I bet you there are people on Etsy looking for sew on butterfly patches or fabric butterfly applique. I know I've looked on Etsy for such things, so maybe make and sell them. So I am going to bring it in a little closer so you can see more of the details and I thank you so, so much for watching.